Hello, I'm Charlie Heaps, developer of Leap, and I want to welcome you to this third training exercise. In this exercise, my colleague Chris Malley of SEI's York Centre will take you through exercise three of the standard Leap training exercises, covering charcoal production, oil refining, coal mining, and resource extraction. As a reminder, you can get a copy of the exercises here at leap.sei.org slash training. And within Leap, you can open the included Fredonia dataset, then use the menu option Area Revert to Version to see answer keys corresponding to the end of each section of the exercises. Over to you, Chris. Hello and welcome to this tutorial, this step-by-step -step guide for the third LEAP training exercise, Transformation. In this exercise, we're going to further develop the transformation data set that we started to construct in exercise one. In this exercise, we're going to add new modules to examine charcoal production, oil refining and coal mining. And we're going to expand and add to the electricity generation a module that we created in exercise one to take account of the additional electricity demand that we created in exercise two. Exercise three builds on the work that we did in exercise one and exercise two to look at energy supply and demand in Fredonia. So we recommend that you do exercises one and two before going to exercise three. Let's get started. I'm starting with the LEAP data set that we finished exercise two with. In section 3.1, charcoal production, we are told that no charcoal is imported or exported in Fredonia. It is all produced by conversion from firewood domestically. All charcoal in Fredonia is currently made using traditional earth mounds, which have a conversion efficiency of 20%. But in the future, more efficient brick beehive kills are going to be available that have an efficiency of 47%. And they're going to meet 5% of the charcoal demand by 2020, 20% of the charcoal demand by 2040. So we're going to create a standard transformation module. So I'm going to click add. My transformation module is going to be called charcoal uh, production. And we're going to enter our efficiency data as the efficiency, because that's what we're given in the exercise. So now I have my charcoal production. I need to change my output fuel from electricity to charcoal. So I'm going to make that change. My output fuel is charcoal. And I'm going to add two processes, one for my traditional earth mound kilns and one for my brick beehive kilns. So I'm going to right click and click add. The feedstock fuel is wood. But the name of the process is going to be traditional earth mound kilns. And I'm going to add a second process. And this is going to be brick beehive kilns. So the first thing, I don't need to enter anything under my import or my export target because I'm told in section 3.1 that all of the uh, charcoal is produced domestically from firewood. When I get to the processes in current accounts, I'm going to say that I'm going to enter remainder 100 to Denote that 100% of the fire of the charcoal is produced by traditional earth mound kilns in my base year, which is 2010 in this data set. My process efficiency for these earth mound kilns is 20%, and for brick beehive kilns, it's 47%. So I've now entered all the information that I need for current accounts. I've entered the efficiency of the process. 
and I've said that 100% are traditional earth mound kilns. To complete entering the information for my charcoal production module, I'm then going to go to my baseline and I'm going to enter the expression to gradually increase the amount of charcoal that is produced using brick beehive kilns. So I'm saying interp and then 2025% and 2040 it will be 20%. We can now see from the graph that we have a gradual increase in the amount of charcoal that is produced using brick beehive kilns. If we move on to section 3.2, electricity generation, we're told that with the addition of the extra demand sectors in exercise 2, the demand for electricity generation triples to 16,200 gigawatt hours per year. So we need to specify a larger and more realistic electricity generation system to match the additional demand that we added in exercise two. So we need to revise and change the data that was entered in exercise one in current accounts for the electricity generation to match what is in the exercise that gives us a more realistic electricity generation system. So the two pieces of information that we have to change are the capacity of our hydro, coal and oil combustion turbine power plants and what fraction of the generation in our base year they contribute to. So I'm going to go into electricity generation and then processes. And I want to change the historical production and I want to do that in my current accounts scenario. So that's very important that we're in current accounts. Now I'm told that my existing hydro plants contribute 34% of the total generation um, in current accounts. And the total generation is 16,200. So I can write that as a little equation. 16,200 times 34% for hydro. For coal steam, it's 44%. So I can enter that like so. And finally, oil combustion turbine is the remaining 22%. My capacity is increasing for each of my power plants. 1,000 for hydro, 2,000 for oil combustion turbine, sorry, that should have been 1,000 for hydro, and 2,500 for coal steam. So that's all I need to do to revise my electricity generation module to take account of the additional generation capacity needed to meet the demand. We're also told in the baseline scenario, if you remember in exercise one in the baseline scenario, we had a um, we had a, a phasing out, a retirement of our coal steam power plants. So in the baseline, the capacity of existing coal steam will decrease with 1,500 retired in 2020 and everything retired in 2030. So we need to revise this step function, step 2020, and we're retiring 1,500 in 2020, which means there is a thousand megawatts of capacity left in 2020 because 1,500 has been retired. Then in 2030, it will all be retired. So now we have revised the electricity generation sector for the baseline as well to reflect the retirement of the, all the additional coal steam that we have entered. Let's move on now to section 3.3, oil refining. So we're told that in 2010, Fredonia's oil refineries had the capacity to handle 6 million tonnes of crude oil feedstocks. And the efficiency of the refineries was about 95%. 
there are no plans to increase this capacity. The refineries had one feedstock fuel crude oil and produced seven types of oil products, gasoline, diesel, kerosene, etc. The refineries can be operated with enough flexibility that the mix of refinery products matches the mix of requirements for those products. Any oil products that cannot be produced are imported into Fredonia. So we are told to set up the oil refining in LEAP, first create a new module named oil refining. We want it to be a standard module that includes capacity data. So under transformation, we're going to right click and click add. The name of our module will be oil refining. This is a standard module. We enter the efficiency data as efficiencies, but we're going to include the capacity. Okay. So now we have our oil refining module. Our output fuel is not electricity. We're going to change that. It's seven different types of oil products. So the first is gasoline. But I'm going to add the other six. I'm going to add Avgas, aviation gasoline. I'm going to add next kerosene. I'm going to right click output fuels and then add diesel. I'm going to right click and add residual fuel oil. And then two more LPG and lubricants. OK. And we were told any oil product requirement that cannot be produced in the refinery are, report, are imported sorry, into Fredonia. And we can see here, if I switch to current accounts, the shortfall rule is import to meet shortfall. So that's, been, that's the default value in LEAP. There's nothing that we need to change there. We then have processes. And we're going to add here our process. And our feedstock fuel is crude oil. So we've got one process for crude oil, seven output fuels. Underneath crude oil, underneath this process, we're going to dis dispatch based, based on the process share. Our first simulation year is going to be the base year. So if I click on the yellow expression here, or I can just type in base year. My process share is 100%. 100% uh, it's 100% uh, is going going through this process. And my efficiency is 95%. So we are told that the capacity of our um, uh, oil refining is 6 million tons of crude oil. So I'm assuming tons of oil equivalent is equal to a ton of crude oil. And I'm putting in 6 million tons there of um of uh, production capacity. So I've now entered all the data there to specify my oil refining module. So I'm going to click Save. If we now go to section 3.4 of the exercise, coal mining, our Coal mining is modelled in a very similar way to oil refining. All coal mined in Fredonia is bituminous, we're told. In the base year, the country's coal mines produced 3.41 million tonnes of coal. 
and the mining capacity was 6 million tonnes. The efficiency of coal mining was 80%. In the baseline scenario, coal mining capacity will increase, reaching 14 million tonnes in 2020 and 23 million tonnes in 2040. It's assumed that the mine capacity will expand linearly in the, in the years between these data years. So there's going to be a, a, a linear increase between 2010 and 2020 and 2020 and 2040. In spite of this expansion, it's expected that sometime in 2030, imports of coal will be needed to meet domestic requirements, not because of resource limits, but because of the capacity of the mines is unable to expand as fast as demand for coal grows. OK, so let's begin to create that module for coal mining to enter the data. We're first going to right click on transformation and click add and then type in coal mining as our name for our module. Similarly to oil refining, this is going to be a simple module, uh, a standard module, sorry, not a simple module, where we enter the efficiency data as efficiencies and we enter the capacity. As we're told in the exercise, all the coal in Fredonia is bituminous. So the output fuel, not electricity, I'm going to right click and click properties and I'm going to change it to coal bituminous. So we have one output fuel and that's the bituminous coal. We then are just told about the overall um, coal mining sector in Fredonia. So we, only, uh, we are only going to add one process where the feedstock fuel is uh, bituminous coal also. And this covers all mines in the country. So we're not splitting it by different types of coal mines. OK. So our dispatch rule is still percent share. But in coal mining, we know how much coal mine was produced in our base year. So our first simulation year will be the first scenario year and not the base year like we entered for oil refining where we uh, where we were going to model from the base year here we're just modeling from the scenario year our process share for all mines is going to be 100% 100% of the coal mine comes from this all all mine process and the efficiency of the process is 80% our historical production was 3.41 million tons of coal. So I've now got 3.41 million tons of coal produced. So now I've entered all of the data to be able to look at the coal mining sector in our base year. But we're told two things about what's going to happen in the future as well in our baseline scenario. The first thing that we're told is in the baseline scenario, the capacity, ah, sorry, I hadn't entered everything for the um, historical years. I hadn't entered the capacity, which was 6 million tons of coal. So let's enter that as well. 6 million tons of coal uh, capacity in our base year in 2010. But I'm also told two things about the base, uh, the, the baseline scenario. The first thing I'm told is that this capacity is going to increase. It's going to increase to 14 million tons in 2020 and 23 million tons in 2040. So I'm going to use an interp function to say in 2020 it's going to be 14 million tons and then in 2040 it's going to be 23 million tons. And the interp function has created a linear change between 2010 and 2020 and 2020 and 2040, um, as it specifies in the in section 3.4 of the um, of the training exercise document. We are also told it's expected that sometime after 2030 imports of coal will be needed to meet domestic requirements not because of resource limits, 
but because the capacity of the mines is unable to expand as fast as demand for coal grows. And it tells us that imports of coal should not be entered as capacity, but instead governed by the output properties of the coal mining output fuels branch. So if we go under coal mining to output fuels, we then have the output properties. We need to make sure that the shortfall rule is set to import to meet shortfall, to meet the modeling demands above. So this is the second part of our baseline scenario. This expression here tells LEAP that when our domestic requirements exceed what we can produce domestically, we should import to meet that shortfall. So we don't need to enter anything here. The default expression in LEAP covers the situation that is described in the LEAP training exercise. The final part of this exercise, section 3.5, then looks at the resources branch. We're told in the exercise that the final step in entering data is to specify which primary resources are produced domestically and which need to be imported. In LEAP, we can specify the base year reserves of fossil fuels and the maximum annual available yield of renewable energy, such as hydro, wind, solar, etc. Unless we indicate otherwise, LEAP will assume that any resources not available domestically or that can't cover the domestic requirements are then imported. This data on resources is stored under the resource branch for primary and for secondary resources. And we have then a branch for each of the fuels that we specify as being used in Fredonia. We, the, the branches are updated automatically as we edit, edit the rest of the tree structure in LEAP. So for example, when we add a new fuel to demand or for transformation, it will appear under the resource branches. In Fredonia, the only domestic energy sources are coal, hydropower, biomass, i.e. wood and wind. All natural gas and oil resources have to be imported. No detailed data are, are available on coal, hydro, biomass and wind resource base in Fredonia. So for this analysis, we're going to assume that these resources are essentially unlimited. We're not going to put a cap or a, a limit on the um, level of those resources available because we don't have that data for Fredonia. So what we're going to do in LEAP to reflect this, we're going to go to resource branch and for the base year reserves for coal, we're going to say that it is unlimited. And for the yield available of hydro, wood, we're going to say that this is also unlimited. For the reserves um, available of crude oil and natural gas, we're saying that the um, the reserves available are zero, that mean that, and that means that everything else will be imported. For the secondary fuels that we use, because they come from primary fuels, we don't need to enter the resource availability for any of these fuels. And then I can finally review, uh, review the results. Section 3.6 of the training document tells us to switch to the energy balance view and check the energy and end year balances against the tables that are shown in the training exercise document. So I'm going to click on this energy balance view. And if we look at the training exercise document, we can see that the total demand for energy is 239.6 million gigajoules. And we can see that the total demand that we have in our energy balance for Fredonia, having entered all of that data, is 239.6 million gigajoules of energy. So we can confirm that we've been able to, to enter the data in the correct way to get the right balance of energy supply and demand. I hope this tutorial for LEAP Training Exercise 3 has been useful. Good luck with your own analyses. Thank you for watching.